Education at Spirit Kiever Equine Sanctuary. Today is Monday, February 17th, 2020, and I'm here with our Sonoran Gopher Snake. His name is Neutron, and this is just an impromptu video because Neutron was awake. He was out and about climbing around his enclosure. I'm going to feed him, and his enclosure needed cleaned. I took him out, and that went very well. And I'm gonna tell you why that's significant and why I decided to make a video about this. This is gonna be part of our Habituating New Snake series. I got this little gopher snake on December 8th, 2019. Well, that's just over two months ago. And when we initially got him, he was very, very darty, as many gopher snakes are when they're babies and they're afraid of everything. And he did quite a bit of hissing and tail rattling that first day that we brought him home. And I set him up into a terrarium. I'll get some shots of his terrarium for you in a minute. But it's a 12 by 12 footprint and it's 15 inches high. So I set him up with a thick layer of aspen bedding. It's two or three inches thick, a hide on the warm side and the cool side, a humidity hide, a large water dish, two logs to climb on, some shelves, and some perching. So he has both ground space and or arboreal space, as well as a fossorial area that he can get underneath and burrow. So this is Neutron's enclosure, and it's a Zilla 12 by 12 footprint, and then it's 15 inches high. So inside it, we have aspen bedding, and then he has his humidity hide with damp sphagnum moss in it, part of an empty paper towel roll, large water, two ground hides, and he's got lots of stuff to climb on. And then we've got some fake foliage in here. And I set him next to the couch, where when I do take the occasional break to watch TV, I sit and watch TV, and where I normally eat my meals. And I just have left him be. He gets lots of activity in and near his enclosure and it's allowed him self desensitization or passive habituation, which means he has plenty of places to retreat and hide and he doesn't have to come out and look at anything or interact if he doesn't want to. But after two months of sitting here, next to where I often eat, sometimes bring my laptop, sometimes sit and he's relax. He's just gradually habituated himself. I haven't taken him out of the enclosure for this first two months and I've just been feeding him in his enclosure and I notice him sticking his head out of his hide or sticking his head out from underneath the um, aspen bedding. And I just been allowing him to come in and out of hiding as he chooses. I've not been invading his space, but as you might imagine, there's lots of commotion around his enclosure. And so he has the opportunity to come out and investigate what's going on in his environment, or he can hide, it's his choice. I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, he's been coming out more. Now he has shed twice since he's been with us and he's been a great feeder. We've had no problem with him eating. But as I said, he just pokes his little head out of his hide and I feed him in his enclosure. So today his enclosure needed cleaned. After two months of him just being left alone and me not invading his space, we really needed to clean. And so I just reached in there and took him out. Now he hissed at me open mouthed one time and he tail rattled at me one time. And other than that, he just sat quietly on my hand for about 10 minutes before he started moving around as he is now. And I really feel like this was a successful interaction between he and I, and I'm going to feed him when we're done here. But it also illustrates the importance of giving your snake time to just settle in and get to know you and the activity in your household by gradual desensitization and passive habituation. He gradually desensitized himself to me, to my presence, to the activity around him, what I smell like, what I look like, what the other animals in the home look like and smell like. Just by being left alone in his terrarium and us doing our normal activity all around him. And it gave him the ability to come out when he wanted and hide when he felt scared. We call that passive habituation because we're just setting him up in a safe environment where he can come out and see things and experience activity or where he can hide and we're not doing anything except behaving normally in our household. And I think two months of that has really been beneficial for him because now today when I took him out, there was almost no drama. Actually, there was no drama when I initially reached in and took him out 
and he was probably out on my hand for 30 seconds or 45 seconds before he gave me that one hiss and tail rattle and that was it and then he just sat on my hand very quietly for several minutes just now he's starting to move around but i've got lots of tongue flicking going on and lots of green zone behaviors he is a little nervous of course this is his first time with me really doing any sort of significant handling with him and his first time out of the enclosure like this i think he's doing fantastic because he's had two months of passive habituation where he can desensitize himself slowly as he felt comfortable and he gained confidence and so again this is neutron he's a sonoran gopher snake and this is really the first time that you're seeing him. We'll have Faith walk up here and you can get some get a close up of what he looks like. He was hatched August, no. I'm trying to do this by memory because this video was very impromptu. He was hatched September 5th, 2019. So he's just a few months old. And I got him from Andy Watson, who's a local breeder in the Denver area. We've gotten some of our Morelia bread life from him as well. And again, this is Neutron. We sent in his very first shed to Rare Genetics, Inc., Ben Morell's company. And we had genetic sex determination DNA testing done on him. And it was verified through genetic testing that he is a male. So what I'm gonna do right now, because I would say he's been out about 15 minutes at this point, is I'm going to give him something to eat and put him back in his freshly cleaned enclosure. This is Neutron's first experience eating out of his enclosure, and this is the first step in teaching him to do future activities like station training and puzzle feeding and traversing mazes. And so what we've done is we've set him on one of our feeding stations, one of the stations that we use for station training and target training, and I put the rodent inside a cup. And instead of having him hunt for it, because I think since this is his first time, He's a little bit too nervous, and he doesn't know that he's supposed to hunt for the food. I just put it in the cup and showed him the cup with the rodent in it, and he ate it right away. And so now he's having this experience eating out of his enclosure, eating on the station, and eating out of this cup. And hopefully next time when we decide to do an activity like this, he'll have a little bit of a clue as to what to do. And we may put the rodent in the cup and set it a little bit further away from him and see if he can start to find it by sight or smell. And then we'll just gradually make things more challenging for him each time. What we have here is Neutron's enclosure. And as you can see, we have about two to three inches of aspen bedding in here because he's not just sitting here habituating to me and watching my activity when I'm in here, but I'm watching him as well. And one of the activities that he does a lot is burrow under this substrate. So he's got a couple of hides in here, but he doesn't always necessarily use those hides to hide. He gets under the aspen and use, makes his own tunnels in here to hide. So he's got two hides. He has damp sphagnum moss in a moss box or a humidity hide and he does use that a lot. He's got a water dish that's big enough for him to get in and he does get in this water dish and swim and soak. He's got part of a paper towel roll and then I have part of a branch in here for him to climb on and I've got one of these for climbing. So all of this is in his enclosure, plus a PVC perch and a shelf and some fake vines and foliage. And then on the front, I keep index cards with all of his information, his hatch date, where I got him from, when he arrived here, all his meals and sheds. And then this I get from Cloud Forest Designs. It says information about the species that he is, Pichuapus catnifera thinnus, which is a snoring gopher snake. And I try to put these, as well as these index cards, on all the enclosures so when we have visitors, they can look and see what snakes in what habitat. And also, if something were to happen to me, 
then my intern, my husband, or anybody that would be over here having to manage these animals is going to know what kind they are, when they last ate, what they last ate, and when they last shed, how old they are, who they came from, etc. I think that he has done an outstanding job today. This is literally the first time that I've gotten him out in this manner. He did just wonderful. I'm very proud of little Neutron today. Now, since he did so great, that doesn't mean that now I'm going to start getting him out every day or even every few days. It means that he had a really positive, successful experience today coming out for enclosure cleaning and eating and being handled. And so I'm probably going to leave him alone for a while, maybe a few more weeks and let him see that that was a positive experience. Nothing bad happened. He got to go back into his enclosure and we're just going to go back to that passive habituation process. If I see him coming out more and more, or when I see that he's hungry next time, if instead of just sticking his head out of one of his little hides, he comes to the door, then he's telling me he's okay with more interaction and more handling. And I just do the interaction and handling based on his behavior. And as you can see here, if, I, if my intern can bring the camera up here, he's climbing. And so these snakes are not solely fossorial. They do do burrowing and they do spend time on the ground, but they also are very good climbers, which is why I have a different array of levels in here for him to be active in. We have a level he can burrow in. We have a level that he can be on top of the ground in swimming or in ground hides or in a humidity hide. And then he's got an upper level that he can do some climbing in. And he uses every level of this enclosure at different times. He's using more and more of the terrestrial and arboreal levels, the more confident he's becoming and the more comfortable he is with living here. Initially, he spent more time burrowing. So everybody, thanks for watching. Until next time, please remember to be kind and love your animals.